Hello, this is MakerJ11, and today we're going to be doing some aluminum casting. We are going to be just making some aluminum ingots for future casting projects, so we're going to be just melting down scrap. The main objective of this video is to test out this brand new crucible I bought on eBay and these tongs that I made for it. So the crucible is a number six crucible. Uh, it is rated for eight kilograms of aluminum, I believe, and it was about $60 on Amazon. You can likewise buy them on eBay. I already seasoned it or tempered it or whatever you call it in a kiln for a couple of hours, got it up to a red heat, which is some things you're, uh, some of the things I've read say you're supposed to temper it at a red heat just to set the glaze and everything like that. Um, and then the other thing you want to do, which I will be doing here in a couple of minutes, is before you use it, after it's been sitting for a couple of months, um, you want to drive all the moisture out of it so you will uh, bake it in an oven at 250 degrees Fahrenheit or somewhere around there for a couple of hours just to drive out all the moisture so that when you stick it in your uh, your furnace and blast a ton of heat on it, all that moisture doesn't try to get out really fast and it basically crack it. So you want to uh, heat it up just to drive the moisture out. So that's the clay crucible. Um, these are the tongs I made. I made these at Hack Pittsburgh. One of the questions people were asking me is, People keep having problems with their aluminum ingots sticking to their molds um, when they're using muffin tins. I have not ever had a problem with it. That's because my muffin tins are rusty. And how I got them rusty like this is I basically heated them up with a propane torch to burn off all of the non-stick Teflon coating. And then I just let them rust pretty much. And uh, when there's rust on there, the aluminum will not stick to it very well. So, and then my aluminum scrap that I'm going to be melting down today is mostly uh, things from things that, or aluminum from stuff I've taken apart. So this is chassis and pieces from old equipment. And then like this is a, this is a scooter base. So that's solid aluminum. And then uh, I'm also going to be melting down some screen doors. Nice and toasty. Hot things are hot. Let's put it in the box here so we don't crack it. There we go. Sweet. Now we can go cast stuff with it. I'm going to turn the fire down a little bit, or the air down, so that it heats up slowly. I don't want to shock it. Alright, so I'm going to start with this scrap from stuff I took apart. Hold that down first. Let's turn up the fire a little bit, or the air rather. Oh yeah, it's starting to get a little bit melty. Yep, there goes the tent stakes. Ow, my fingers are cooking. It's probably not the best method using coal because the aluminum is all coated in uh, soot now. So that's probably not going to be the best thing for the aluminum quality because it's going to add a lot of carbon into the aluminum. But hopefully it doesn't really hurt it. 
I don't know. Hopefully the carbon will all burn off as it melts down. All right, so let's scoop some slag and dross off the aluminum. It's just about all melted. Although I'll probably add more aluminum, but I want to get the dross off. I'm just using a 99 cent Goodwill find here for scooping the dross off today. All right, so now we're gonna be doing some degassing. So we're gonna try this again. This is what my Ford boy uses, um, which is washing soda, which is sodium carbonate, I believe. Yeah, sodium carbonate. Um, and so I've wrapped it up, wrapped probably about a teaspoon full, maybe two teaspoons full in a piece of aluminum foil. So we're gonna throw that in, and then we're gonna have this tool that I made, which is just a pole, a metal rod with a, uh, like a muffin tin on the bottom with a bunch of holes in it. So that'll, so I'm gonna push it to the bottom and then this will decompose and bubble up through it, the gases, and it supposedly absorb all the hydrogen. I don't know if it will actually work. That's what my Ford boy uses, so he's been doing castings for years, so we'll see how it goes. It's bubbling. That's what it's supposed to do. It's bubbling a lot. My hand is starting to cook. Ouch. And it looks like it stopped bubbling for the most part. So I guess that means it's, means it's done. Let's so we'll pull it out and see what it looks like. Yeah, I guess it all dissolved from the bottom. Or so bubbled away, decomposed or something, whatever it does. Whatever fancy shenanigans it does. And we'll scoop the dross off one more time and then we'll pour it. All right, so here we go. Let's see if my contraption works. Put my hood down. Oh, it's kind of getting in the way. It's not too hard to shove it, shove it down to the bottom. All right, so looks like there's a bunch of dross on top now after I did that. Or not dross, just ash. Skim that off real quick here. Or rather, we could even skim this off while it's not even in the fire. All right, so let's see how hard this is to lift it up. That's not too bad. Alright, now let's pour some aluminum with my brand new contraption. That's heavy. Yo. It's a bit on the awkward side, but it does work. Let's try grabbing it. That's better. And we'll leave a little bit of aluminum in there for the next batch so that it melts quicker. So we'll put it back in the fire. All 
I would say that's a success. Works quite well. And here goes the scooter board thing. Oh, it must be covered in uh, enamel or something because it's burning off. Oh wow, that's melting really fast. Look at that. Wow. All right, so for this batch, I'm gonna do exactly what I've seen my Ford boy do. And that's he melts the aluminum and then adds the uh, degasser after he takes it out of his uh, furnace. All right, here it is. Nice and toasty. So let's put our degasser in there. She bubbles. And now this batch is going to consist mostly of screen door. So here's some screen door pieces that I have. So we'll start feeding these in. I've tried to knock all the dirt out of them because I found them in the woods. So, oh yeah, that melts nice and fast. Look at that, it goes right in there.
couple hot ingots in there. It like just all of a sudden ruptures into boiling like crazy and then all of a sudden just stops. It's amazing. Dumped water on the fire. Put the crucible over there after I let it cool down slowly a little bit. I really doubt it's gonna crack just from cooling down naturally like that. It held up very well though. I can get probably 20 more castings out of that at least. Well, as many as until I break it pretty much. That's probably what's gonna be the end of it. The tongs held up really good, really well. They're a little bit awkward, but they do work very well. Much safer than other methods. Lots of slag. Lots and lots of slag. All right, well here are the results. We have 32 nice little aluminum ingots or aluminum muffins, of course. Uh, so here's our first batch. So I've dated all these. I put uh, a number on there depicting what batch it was from because we did five ba five batches today. Um, so this one, I just wrote flux on there. It's not really flux, it's degasser, but I wrote flux on there because it's easier to write than degasser on a stupid ingot. So, yep. So just when I put flux on there, I that means I did sodium carbonate um, or washing soda. Then the second batch, I did no flux to see what that would fe what that would seem like. So to look at these, I mean, they don't really look that much different. This one has a lot more crystallization in it. Granted, these are also different uh, types of aluminum too, so this is not really that scientific. Our third batch was uh, MFBS, which is my Ford boy style. That's what I, uh, so yeah, if my, if my Ford boy, if you're watching, yep, that's after you. So basically this one, I put the flux in uh, the sodium carbonate while it was still in the fire, so I put the yeah I, I degassed the walls in the fire. This one I did I took the crucible out of the fire and then put the flux in. That's how my Ford boy to always, I've always seen him do it. So we'll see how that turns out when we turn them on the lathe and see what the what the what it looks like. The last two were with Pro Flux or whatever this stuff is. So this I um, asked some guys that were casting aluminum at Maker Faire Pittsburgh. Um, they had a big, big setup doing lots of aluminum castings. Um, and so I asked them, can I have a flux thingy? So they gave me a flux tablet, a whole one, and I've been, I took some chunks off of it and threw it in these two. So we'll see what those look like. Really, they don't look all that much different, honestly. They all look about the same. I mean, yeah, and then the other thing is that they're all probably at, uh, cast at different temperatures. So this is really not very scientific at all. So, yep, um, but that is what I've got here so far. In a future video, I will be uh, turning each one on the lathe to see what this, what how many bubbles are in it and what the surf, surface finish, see how it machines, and we'll try to kind of get a, a baseline for what we need to do for future castings to get better quality. So... But yeah, for for that's well, that's about it, guys. Um, hope you enjoyed, and as always, keep experimenting.